Hello and welcome to Biology with SWS. We are continuing with our series on the excretory system. This is video number two. I hope you've already seen video number one in which we gave you the introduction to the excretory system as to which are the different forms of excretion and also what's the difference between them and why are the kidneys so important as far as the human physiology is concerned. So let's get started. Now, Looking at the classification, if we classification ki baat kare, on the basis of the nitrogenous compounds that are excreted, uh, there are three different varieties. The way it can be classified, living organisms can be classified. First one is aminotelic, which is the way the fish and the crocodile, they excrete. Then comes people like us, the ureotelic, who excrete urea in the urine and it includes mammals and also frogs. So human beings or mender ki beech mein ye common point to hai. Okay. Then comes the urocotelic which excrete uric acid and this includes uh, birds, reptiles and also different forms of insects. Now, now let's go over the kidneys. Now this is an important part and the diagram is very important and also you should know how to draw this particular diagram. Diagram ke baare mein hamesha yaad rakhe. You are not being judged on the beauty of the diagram. Of course, if the diagram is beautiful, it always is helpful. But you are marked more on the accuracy of the diagram and the accuracy of the markings. Is baat ka dhyan hamesha rakhe and the more you practice, the better it will be for you. So you see there are two uh, kidneys in a human body and then there is, they join with the ureter to the urinary bladder. Now, if you have to go through it, kidneys are essentially two bean-shaped organs which are 10 centimeter long and 6 centimeter wide in an adult body. The location is on either side of the backbone and the right kidney is at a slightly lower level than the left one. The ureter tube which connects as we saw, which connects the kidneys, the right and the left kidneys to the urinary bladder. It arises from the helum. The spot in the kidney from where it arises is called the helum, H-I-L-U-M, and it connects with the urinary bladder. Now, the urine is produced in the kidneys and it flows through the ureters, through those two tubes, and it collects in the urinary bladder. The urine is emptied from the urinary bladder to the outside of the human body through the urethra. Okay, so three parts are very important or let me say four parts. The two kidneys, the helum from where the ureter starts and joins the urinary bladder and the spot from where the uh, excretion takes place to outside the body is called the urethra. The openings of the ureters act like walls to prevent the backflow of urine when bladder contracts to pass out urine. Okay. Now, the other uh, important part that you need to uh, be aware of is the, uh, the spinster, the circular guards, opening of the bladder into the urethra. Now, this muscle, the micturation, the process is essentially the action of urinating is called micturation. So, the muscle, what happens during micturation can be a question. So what happens during micturation is that the muscle relaxes only at the time of urination under an impulse from the brain. So under an impulse from the brain, which is part of the nervous system, the muscle relaxes at the time of urination and this process is called micturation. So micturation is essentially the action of urination. Okay. Now let's go closer to understanding the internal structure of the kidney. Okay. What you can see uh, here is the cortex, which is the outer layer of the uh, kidney. Okay. The outer layer is called the cortex. Then you have the inner medulla. Okay. Which is the inner layer of the kidney, the left and the right kidney. Then the medulla is composed of a number of pyramids. They are called the pyramids that is marked uh, in the diagram. They are called the pyramids which are in that kind of a shape, a conical kind of a shape. And the apex, apex means the top portion of the pyramid, the top portion of the pyramid, it projects into the pelvis of the kidney, the middle portion of the kidney. So 
then you have a number of uriniferous tubules or nephrons okay that we will come to in this uh, next diagram which is about the kidney tubule the structure of the kidney tubule okay now what happens is that here if you see in the yellow portion you will see something marked called the bowman's capsule this is very important bowman's capsule the glomerulus are among the most important ones and then of course uh, you have the loop of henley so the bowman's capsule is a thin walled cup it's like a hollow ball and uske andar glomerulus rehta hai okay we'll come to glomerulus in a while because that's a capillary network okay so the Bowman, bowman's capsule and the glomerulus together are what are known as the malphigian capsule or the renal capsule okay so glomerulus is a full network of capillaries which is inside the bowman's capsule like this okay then you have uske baad bowman's capsule nikal ke it's like different tubes which you would have seen almost like in a chemistry lab you know different tubes then we come to what is called the convoluted tubule which is called the pct the proximal uh, convoluted tubule pct uh, which is the first starting convoluted region of the tubule which is closer to the bowman's capsule and that leads to this loop that you can see it's like a deep u shape that is called the loop of henley the loop of henley is what uh, that is called the middle portion the u shape which is almost like a hairpin bend why is a hairpin bend you would have seen a hairpin right uh, it is like a deep u shape right so this loop of henley is also like the deep u shaped one the loop of henley it is not convoluted like the pct it is not convoluted but it's like a deep u and it runs in medulla to turn back and re-enters the cortex uh, to continue into the next convoluted region of the tubule, right? So from one convoluted region, PCT, then you follow the loop of Henle and it goes into what is called the distal convoluted tubule, which is called the DCT. PCT, loop of Henle, DCT. Distal convoluted tubule uh, is the last part of the kidney tubule. Distal means further. So as you say, aap yaad rasakte proximal means proximity proximity to what proximity to the bowman's cap capsule proximity matlab pass rehna so pass proximity yaad karne mein aasani hogi pp proximity means nearer to the bowman's capsule then follows the loop of henley and then goes to the distal convoluted tubule which is distant which is furthest away from the uh, bowman's capsule okay it op opens into a collecting duct which you see last made danda ke tarah jo hai that is the collecting duct through which the urine flows and it pours it as urine in the pelvis of the kidney so that's how the structure of the kidney tubule is this is an important diagram from the examination point of view also okay now <coughs> i have just written it out here so let me just revise it now once i have explained to you with the diagram so the Bowman's capsule is a thin walled cap, uh, cup. It lodges the glomerulus, which is a not like mass of blood capillaries. Uske andar kafi sare jund of blood capillaries are there. That is called the glomerulus. Then Bowman's capsule plus the glomerulus is called the renal capsule or malphigian capsule. The proximal convoluted tubule, PCT, followed by Henley's loop or loop of Henley, and then the distal convoluted tubule, which is called the DCT, and then there is the collecting duct. Okay, the structure of the kidney tubule is very important. I hope you have understood it. Now, let's come to the blood supply to the kidneys part. What happens is, this is the order in which it happens, which is why I've written it like this. Pehle, how does the blood supply to the kidneys happen? The renal arteries from the dorsal aorta enters the two kidneys. Okay, so pehla portion you need to remember renal arteries from dorsal aorta enters the two kidneys, left kidney and the right kidney. Each arteriole enters the Bowman's capsule and that one is called the afferent arteriole. A or E may confuse mat hoiega. Okay, afferent arteriole. Then capillaries from the glomerulus because that's like a mass of capillaries inside. Capillaries from the glomerulus, then they lead on to the secondary capillaries. From there, it goes to the renal vein 
and then it goes to the posterior vena cava, which is the largest vein in the human body. Okay, so please remember this order. This order is something which you need to remember. So uh, it ends with the largest vein, which is the posterior vena cava. Now, uh, the stats are very interesting and it's very fascinating the way human body like a great machine actually works. All the blood in the body actually passes through the kidneys 350 to 400 times in a single day at the rate of 1 to 2 liters per minute. So you imagine the amount of activity that actually happens within the human body. And the total length of all the tubules put together is more than 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers is the total length of all the tubules put together. Okay, so that is as far as the blood supply to the kidney tubules is concerned. Okay, I hope till here you have understood. In the next video, we will be looking at the functions of the kidney, the formation of urine. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Tata, bye-bye.